If you're one of the four people who subscribe to this channel, you might remember me mentioning I'm a big fan of Godzilla, and when it comes to anime, I love fucking monsters. So naturally, I was really excited to check out Godzilla Planet of Monsters. Godzilla Planet of Monsters is of course the first animated version of Godzilla we've gotten in a while. There have been other animated versions of Godzilla before. There was the 1998 animated series, which wasn't that bad, especially when you consider it was based off of a fucking dumpster fire. There was also the 1978 Hanna-Barbera cartoon, which can be best described as... Uh, how should I put it? That's some bullshit. So needless to say, Godzilla's track record in animation is questionable at best. But that didn't ruin my excitement for Godzilla Planet of Monsters. You see, unlike the previous animated versions of Godzilla, Godzilla Planet of Monsters is the first Godzilla animated series to be produced and developed in Japan. Now an anime version of Godzilla seems like a no-brainer. It should be the greatest thing ever. It should be as great as a big-tittied anime girl who showers you with an endless supply of pizza and beer. Fucking awesome. Yeah, that's not the case. Godzilla Planet of Monsters kind of sucks. The film kicks things off with the Earth being ravaged by monsters, all while being visited by two separate alien races. The Exif, a group of religious missionaries, and the Bilu Saludo, who have a plan to kill Godzilla with Mechagodzilla. Fuck. Yeah. But Mechagodzilla doesn't work, everything goes to shit, and the three races have to evacuate the Earth to look for a new inhabitable planet. Since they can't find a new inhabitable planet, everyone has to come back to the Earth, which has become the titular PLANET OF MONSTERS! Planet of Monsters feels like a mixture of Shin Godzilla, Godzilla 2014, and Attack on Titan. The main character, Haruo, named after Godzilla suit actor Haruo Nakajima, is sort of like Planet of Monsters' version of Eren Yeager. Even the plot of Planet of Monsters, which has the remnants of humanity confined to a small colony while trying to take back their home, is very reminiscent of Attack on Titan. Now, I don't have a problem with movies ripping off ideas from other movies, like some people. Especially Godzilla movies. Lord knows they've done it before. Godzilla films have ripped off Back to the Future, the Terminator, Indiana Jones, The Matrix, who gives a shit if they rip off Attack on Titan? The problem is, Planet of Monsters doesn't know how to handle an Eren Yeager type character. Attack on Titan spends the first five episodes developing Eren's character and backstory. Attack on Titan makes you sympathize with Eren by showing you his relationship with his friends, as well as showing you the toll the Titans have taken on the human race. So by the time Eren faces off with the colossal Titan for a second time, you are completely with him, and you understand why he's driven by rage. Planet of Monsters takes Haruo's backstory and condenses it to five minutes, then locks him in a cell. So you never get a chance to relate to his situation. The film doesn't spend any time developing his motivations, and he ends up coming off as a one-note character. When Haruo finally faces off with Godzilla, it should feel like a big deal, but it just falls flat, because the movie hasn't earned the moment. Rather than feeling like a rival finally facing off with a bitter enemy, it just feels like angry guy fights monster. And quite frankly, I can't tell if Haruo is supposed to be a hero or villain, he's extremely unlikable and just comes off as needlessly surly. It also doesn't help that the film starts off with Haruo planting bombs on a landing ship and threatening to blow up the vessel that's filled with grandparents and children if the landing ship doesn't return to the home base. See, the reason Haruo is holding the landing ship hostage is because he thinks the higher-ups aren't sending the landing ship down to save the people. Haruo thinks the higher-ups are knowingly sending the landing ship down to an inhospitable planet in an effort to kill them. So in other words, the hero's plan to save the grandparents and children from dying on an alien planet is to blow them up in space. <laughs> what. The. Fuck. <laughs> It's not just Haruo, all the characters are underdeveloped. They basically break down to blonde guy, a feminine priest guy, old guy, girl guy, this guy, that guy, some guy. What makes it even worse is that the character designs are generic and everybody's wearing the same goddamn spacesuit. I had to watch the movie three times before I realized this was two different fucking characters. Most anime that revolve around characters living in a spaceship will give them different color spacesuits, or at least give everyone a unique style with the way they wear their spacesuit. You know, it helps to differentiate the characters, makes it a little bit easier to tell them apart. 
Maybe it even gives you a little bit of insight into their personality. But in this movie, everyone's wearing the same fucking spacesuit in the same fucking way. It's just the same person over and over and over and over and over. You could probably explain the fact that the reason everyone is wearing the same uniform in Planet of Monsters is to reinforce the idea of unity and conformity amongst the ship inhabitants. Sort of like what Attack on Titan did. But I think that would be generous. Honestly, I think the reason everyone is wearing the same fucking spacesuit is because the animation team figured it would be easier to model one suit, change some patches, then slap on different heads. I also had a really hard time trying to figure out what the interpersonal relationship was between the characters. You would think people living together on a spaceship would have a bond with each other, you know, because they spend so much time in close proximity. But everyone in this movie feels like strangers meeting each other for the first time. There's a reference to Hotaro and Leland being childhood friends, but there's no chemistry between them. They just seem like colleagues who coldly acknowledge each other. And for the life of me, I could not figure out what the fuck was going on between Hotaro and Yuko. When Yuko is first introduced, Hotaro reacts as if he knows her, and then there are hints they have a past. But Yuko just talks to Hotaro as if he's her superior and they've never had a relationship before. What makes it even more bizarre is earlier in the film, when Hotaro is about to blow up the landing ship, he talks to one of the people on the ship and refers to him as grandfather. Then when Hotaro and Yuko are talking, she mentions her grandfather was on the landing ship. So is this two different grandfathers or is it the same grandfather? Are Hotaro and Yuko related? Why doesn't she say, You try to kill my grandfather, you stupid fuck? I think a lot of these problems are compounded by the the fact that Planet of Monsters is meant to be the first part of a trilogy, so it just feels like an incomplete film. It actually feels more like a pilot to a TV series, where there's a lot of plot and there's a lot of setup, but nothing is ever paid off. It's actually a problem I see with a lot of Hollywood films that are trying to start franchises. They introduce all these plot threads, and you just have to assume they're going to pay them off in later films. It's like they're giving you a fucking beta copy of the movie. They know there are plot holes, and they know there are things that don't add up. They're just hoping the sequel will fix all that shit. <laughs> Visually, Godzilla Planet of Monsters is kind of a mixed bag. I like the CGI and I think it's a good fit for a Godzilla anime. The suits and miniature sets of the classic Godzilla films created a stylized reality, which I think CGI preserves. If the Godzilla anime was just traditionally animated, the Godzilla scenes would lose that feeling of heightened realism. I think the opening of the film is brilliant, both visually and dramatically. It's undeniably the best part of the anime. Unfortunately, Planet of Monsters blows its visual load in the first five minutes. The rest of the movie has this banal sameness with copy and pasted character models and a very bland color palette. Everything on the titular Planet of Monsters just looks monochromatic and fucking boring. <laughs> Okay, so maybe this is just the Godzilla fan of me speaking now, but I really don't think it's fair to pick apart the plot of Godzilla Planet of Monsters. I mean, plenty of things in the Showa Godzilla movies didn't make any fucking sense. Seriously, trying to figure out the physics of this will make your fucking head explode. And trying to explain the logic of Godzilla's superkick is like unweaving a rainbow. The mystery is what makes it so intriguing. Rational logic didn't matter in the later Showa Godzilla films because the Showa Godzilla movies weren't really about the story, they were about creating an over-the-top spectacle. However, with its serious tone and sparse monster action, Godzilla Planet of Monsters forces you to analyze the story. Because there isn't much else going on, and quite frankly, I think that's the core problem. You see, Godzilla Planet of Monsters isn't just an anime Godzilla film with a serious take on Godzilla. It's the third serious take we've had on Godzilla since 2014. All three of the recent Godzilla films depict him in the same way, as an unstoppable, uncaring force of nature. Which is a throwback to Godzilla 1954. Godzilla 2014 did take some elements from the Hesse series, and Shin Godzilla did have its moments of levity, but all in all, they were both serious depictions of Godzilla. Planet of Monsters continues this approach, and at times, it's even more dour and more depressing than the past two films. A Godzilla anime with aliens that takes place in the future and has characters visiting an Earth that has become a planet of fucking monsters was a great opportunity to have more fun with the material. An anime version of Godzilla is a great venue to bring back the more over-the-top elements of the character. I mean, we don't have to get as silly as like fucking Godzilla dancing, but we could get into Destroy All Monsters territory. Even the title, Planet of Monsters, calls to mind Monster Island from the later Showa films. Now I do realize, expecting Godzilla to go back to the Showa era is kind of a fucking pipe dream. Toho isn't really willing to go full retard and go too over-the-top with the Godzilla franchise. Even though I thought Final Wars was great, it wasn't a huge success and it did get a lot of mixed reactions. Okay, so maybe 
maybe the show of Godzilla can't really connect with modern audiences the way it did in the past. But I do think the Hesse Godzilla is a perfect fit for a Godzilla anime. The great thing about the Hesse Godzilla is it managed to turn Godzilla into a character without sacrificing his credibility. Showa Godzilla was an over-the-top superhero, but Hesse Godzilla was a fucking badass, no-nonsense anti-hero. Sure, Hesse Godzilla might save a city from another monster, but the only reason he saved the goddamn city was so he could be the one to fucking destroy it himself. Rather than retreading the same territory as Shin Godzilla, Planet of Monsters could have treated Godzilla as an actual character. I think that would have made Godzilla more engaging to the audience, and it would set him apart from the other current versions of the character. Because right now, Godzilla in Planet of Monsters just feels like Shin Godzilla in Godzilla 2014's body. <laughs> So even though I have my problems with Godzilla Planet of Monsters, I didn't hate it, and there were plenty of things that I did enjoy. I'm not a fan of Godzilla's design, but I thought the look of the character fit the world perfectly, and all the Godzilla action scenes were excellent. They most certainly delivered on the damage you'd expect to see from a Godzilla movie. I also thought the ending of the film showed a lot of promise. The introduction of the native girl has a lot of cool possibilities, and I think she'll be a great addition to the roster of characters. In a lot of ways, the last 20 minutes of the film is just as strong as the opening. The movie is bookended quite nicely. It's just a shame the middle is such a fucking letdown. I found the themes the movie was presenting to be really compelling, and I look forward to see where the filmmakers go with these ideas. Godzilla is usually a metaphor for Japan, but Planet of Monsters almost seems like a representation of the world in general. It explores the issue of citizens and refugees and asks the question, who does the earth belong to? And does anyone really deserve a home? It's also fascinating the way they set up the different alien races, and I'm very interested to see how the filmmakers treat the interactions in the future. So in closing, even though I was disappointed with the first part of Godzilla Planet of Monsters, I am excited for the sequel, and here's hoping the sequel irons out all the problems with this film. <laughs>